So you're talking to your Muslim friend about God and sin and righteousness, and then he finally tells you what's really been bothering him. Why do Christians eat pork? Unless he's an American convert to Islam, in which case he'll say it like this. Pork is the white man, and the white man is pork. Have you spelled white man backwards? What does it spell? Pork. Now, when this topic comes up, you'll have an urge to start explaining the differences between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, and to show your Muslim friend certain passages about dietary restrictions to help him understand what the Bible is saying to various groups. But you must resist this urge, because if you let your Muslim friend keep talking about pork and the Bible, he will eventually bury his own prophet. Let's see how this is done. With us, as always, is everyone's favorite fake debater, Dr. Zakir Naik. Dr. Naik, could you show us how to bury your own prophet? <laughs> I mean, could you tell us why we shouldn't eat pork? Bible says in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 11, chapter number 11, verse number 7 and 8, that thou shalt not eat the flesh of swine, nor touch its carcass. It's unclean for you. He's dug the hole, ladies and gentlemen. If Zakir Nike were a truck, he'd be... Grave Keep going, Dr. Nike. A similar message is given in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8. Though the swine has cloven foot and it chews not the crud, it is unclean for you. Dr. Nike has officially lowered Muhammad's body into a freshly dug grave. All that's left is to fill the hole with dirt. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 and 20, that think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. I have come not to destroy, but to fulfill. For anyone who breaks one of the least commandments shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. And what does that mean, Dr. Nike? That means if you break one law, one jot or tittle from the Old Testament, you shall not enter Jannah. So long, Muhammad. You've officially been buried by Dr. Zakir Naik. How so? Well, Dr. Naik quoted Leviticus 11, verses 7 and 8. But what happens when we start at verse 1? The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Say to the Israelites, Of all the animals that live on land, these are the ones you may eat. You may eat any animal that has a divided hoof and that chews the cud. There are some that only chew the cud or only have a divided hoof, but you must not eat them. The camel, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. It is ceremonially unclean for you. The hyrix, kind of rock badger, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. It is unclean for you. The rabbit, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. It is unclean for you. And the pig, though it has a divided hoof, does not chew the cud. It is unclean for you. You must not eat their meat or touch their carcasses. They are unclean for you. Notice, you must not eat their meat or touch their carcasses. They are unclean for you. The camel, the rock badger, the rabbit, and the pig. They're all unclean. Dr. Nike also quotes Deuteronomy 14, verse 8. But when we start at verse 6, we read, You may eat any animal that has a divided hoof and that chews the cud. However, of those that chew the cud or that have a divided hoof, you may not eat the camel, the rabbit, or the hyrex. Although they chew the cud, they do not have a divided hoof. They are ceremonially unclean for you. The pig is also unclean. Although it has a divided hoof, it does not chew the cud. You are not to eat their meat or touch their carcasses. So the same passages that say, don't eat pig meat, it's unclean, also say, don't eat camel meat, it's unclean, and don't eat rabbit meat, it's unclean. Why should this get every Muslim apologist's beard in a bunch? Sahil Bukhari, 2572. Narrated Anas, we provoked a rabbit at Mar al-Zahran till it started jumping and the people ran after it but were exhausted. Who are you? I overpowered and caught it, and gave it to Abu Talha, who slaughtered it and sent its hip or two thighs to Allah's messenger. The narrator confirms that he sent two thighs. The Prophet accepted that. 
The sub-narrator asked Anas, did the prophet eat from it? Anas replied, he ate from it. Muhammad ate that unclean, wascally wabbit, and he liked it. Sahail Bukhari, 2485. Narrated Rafit ben Khadij. We used to offer the Asr prayer with the prophet and slaughter a camel, the meat of which would be divided in ten parts, and we would eat the cooked meat before sunset. Muhammad and his companions would eat the camel meat. The Quran itself allows Muslims to eat camel meat. Surah 22, verse 36. The sacrificial camels we have made for you as among the symbols from Allah. In them is much good for you. Then pronounce the name of Allah over them as they line up for sacrifice. When they are down on their sides after slaughter, eat ye thereof and feed such as beg not but live in contentment, and such as beg with due humility. Thus we have made animals subject to you, that ye may be grateful." I actually have video footage of Muslims sacrificing a camel. Even more interesting, Allah specifically commands Muslims not to follow Jewish dietary restrictions. In Surah 2 verse 208 of the Quran, Allah declares, O you who believe, enter completely into Islam and do not follow the footsteps of Satan. Surely he is your open enemy. We know the historical context of this verse. You can read it in the Tafsir of Ibn Abbas, Tafsir Jalalain, Ibn Kathir, Qurtubi, and so on. The historical context is that a Jew named Abdullah ibn Salam converted to Islam, but he still kept the Jewish Sabbath and the Jewish dietary restrictions. Specifically, he wouldn't eat camel because it's forbidden in the Torah. Surah 2 verse 208 came to Muhammad as a response to Abdullah. Enter completely into Islam. Don't be part Jew, part Muslim. So Jewish converts to Islam were ordered to abandon Jewish rules about camel meat. Putting all of this together, we've seen that the same passages quoted by Zakhar Naik to show that pork is forbidden also say that rabbit meat and camel meat are forbidden. Do you think that Dr. Naik knew that? Of course he did. He just doesn't like telling his listeners the truth. We've also seen that Muhammad and his followers ate rabbit meat and camel meat in clear violation of the Torah. Moreover, Zakhar Knight claims that Jesus affirmed the Old Testament dietary restrictions and that, according to Jesus, anyone who violates Old Testament dietary restrictions will not enter Jannah. That means if you break one law, one jot or tittle from the Old Testament, you shall not enter Jannah. This means that Dr. Zakhar Naik not only buried Muhammad, he also proved conclusively that Muhammad will never enter Jannah. According to Zakhar Naik, Muhammad stands condemned before both Jesus and Moses because he ate camel and rabbit. So how are you Muslims going to respond? Are you going to tell us not to take those dietary restrictions too seriously? Are you going to say that the mosaic rules about clean and unclean foods can change from one prophet to the next? Too late. That ship has sailed. Your top apologists and scholars have spent years insisting that the dietary restrictions in Leviticus and Deuteronomy are permanent and binding. And by saying this, they've openly declared that Muhammad is permanently bound in hell. Bravo. Dr. Nike. Bravo. That's all, folks.